Hello, my name is Sean Quinn. Welcome to the first edition of our exciting new podcast, Hitting the Fairways, in association with Highland Radio. I'm delighted to be joined today by Bill McCallion, captain of Dunfanny Golf Club, and Pius McFadden, captain of Bunkrana Golf Club. Gentlemen, thank you very much for taking the time to join with me today to talk all things golf. You're very welcome. Thank you very much, Sean. Sean. And I have to say, you are, you are both very looking very well and, and, and looking forward to going on the golf course, I would say, very shortly. Very much so. Um, what I want to do is, I suppose, let's, let's go back a bit, because we know that um, in, on the 26th, uh, golf will be permitted again. But I want to go back into 2020 and, and the struggles that uh, all clubs have had with, with COVID. So as captains of your respective clubs, what has been the main challenges um, that COVID closures you faced? And, and I'll go to you, Bill, first with that one. Yeah, thanks, Sean. Um, I think keeping players interested in, in golf has probably been the, the biggest challenge. The first lockdown was relatively uh, short. And at Dunfanachy, um, we reached out to uh, a lot of golfers who had never set foot in the course before, particularly sportsmen and women who couldn't get access to GAA or soccer or rugby. And uh, like many clubs, I think we did quite well. Uh, we took in uh, a lot of new members uh, and the ones that we took in really got into it then uh, whenever the course uh, reopened again. So if, if you take a step back and look retrospectively at 2020, bizarrely enough, uh, Dunfanahy did quite well. Um, but I think this last lockdown is a, a different kettle of fish altogether. Uh, I mean, I, I think the golfing fraternity, you know, to use a, an East Antrim expression, the, the golfing fraternity is just completely scunnered now. Uh, and keeping uh, members interested uh, in golf, I think, has been a real challenge. Uh, and that's why this podcast is, is such a great uh, initiative from you guys. The master's on at the minute, etc. So I'm really hoping, and I'm sure Pius is the same, I'm really hoping that that will energize a lot of men and women, you know, to dust their clubs down again and really look forward to getting back out on the 26th. Yeah, it's, it's a point well made, Bill. And I suppose, Pius, had, did you find the same thing that you had a lot of new golfers come into the club? And if so, where, where did they come from? Yeah, we had a lot that uh, came to the club. Uh, most of them would have came from the soccer fraternity, the GA fraternity, which uh, the contact sports worked out on, were taking part. So majority, uh, between 50 and 60 new members uh, took up golf. And uh, then we had uh, the main chance for golf clubs, I could see, was the loss of revenue from green fees and society income. You know, while you're still paying maintenance costs, uh, the added pressure of four months a year where membership renewing all then to be taken up. People didn't know what was happening when golf would recommence. So, and that like, it's very slow in getting people back into golf. Yeah, it's an interesting point because where you brought new golfers in last year, um, and I, as being a golfer and, and being on the fairways, I saw a lot of uh, new golfers, you know, and you knew some by the swings, and but you also knew by some of the scores that were coming because they were incredibly athletic and got better and better. But you have a challenge this year, Bill, because as golf reopens, it's going to reopen with other sports. So what as a club in Dunfanny, what, what are you going to do to re-attract these golfers? Well, we did, as you know, Sean, we did a, a special beginner's rate last year, and this was aimed primarily at, uh, at both men and women, young men primarily, uh, not not so much ladies took, took us up on the offer, but we had an introductory rate of 250 euros uh, for uh, beginners who'd never played before. Uh, and we kept that on this year. In fact, we didn't change any of our subscription rates for 2021. Um, and I'm really pleased that uh, many of the beginners from last year have rejoined. Uh, and, and I think if we can a get beginners hooked for two consecutive years then uh, you know they, they'll stick with it because uh, obviously uh, the fear and i'm sure pious is the same in bunkrana you know you get beginners in uh, they play for a few months uh, then their own sport kicks off again literally 
uh, and then they leave golf again. Uh, but I, I'm hopeful that we'll be able to keep the majority of the, the new members that we got last year. That's great to hear, and 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 it's great to see that a club has 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 made the provisions for all that. Um, and it is very very uh, very good value for golf. I have to say, Pius, would it be fair to say that uh, Bongrana Golf Club have the same setup? And have you anything else extra to to keep these golfers? Well, well, like like all our clubs, like we had the large influx of members, and uh, and uh, the main focus on the club will be to as uh, Bill says to retain these members and try and attract more members. Uh, our club offers very attractive reduced rate to beginners, uh, full member male paying two hundred and sixty, and associate member lady is one hundred and ninety. Unlike other clubs, this is all inclusive of GUI and insurance fees. And when you consider the price of a full member meal, it is 350 euros, inclusive of GUI and insurance. You know, that's a great, uh, uh, be great to keep these fellas on and ladies. And, and uh, yeah, the same as both, just. It's well. That's fair to say. That is extremely good value um, for for golfers. And, and what Dumfani and Bunkrana have in common is it's their links courses. They're, they're played twelve years or 12, 12 years, twelve months of the year. Um, and you know that that's a huge benefit to, to to any golfers out there. So financially, in a in a good position, it's fair to say. Um, I suppose like like, like every business. You've had to cut the cloth and you had to look at what can we reduce costs on. Um, what, Bill, would it be fair also to say then as you reopen, you will have challenges, but you're in good footing to start up golf again? Yeah, I think so. I spoke to our greenkeeper just this morning there. And, and unfortunately, as you know, in past, wouldn't know, but I'm stuck in Belfast. I, I'm a traveling captain and it's been really frustrating uh, to try and conduct the orchestra from 120 miles away. Uh, Sean, as you know, my wife Paula, she's a very keen golfer. She's a lady captain, so uh, between the two of us, we've been, you know, trying to steer the ship, which hasn't been easy. But uh, our greenkeeper has done a phenomenal job, and uh, he's been sending me photographic evidence of all the stuff that he's been doing. So I've no doubt that our course will be absolutely uh, tip top. But you know, Sean, there's nothing like a, a cold pint of beer after a bad round of golf. And, uh, you know, <laughs> one of the, the big restrictions that, that we'll all face is uh, is not being able to do that. Um, and who knows, you know, when that will open, and then you're into a whole different challenge about trying to organise outside bar, outside catering, um, you know, so that, that's round the corner for us as well. What, what What's that thing you said there about a bad round of golf? I, I don't know that one. I uh, listen, Quinn. I played the odd game of golf with you. You know all about it. <laughs> I want, I want <laughs> you know, what's that, bias? I want to see two hours watching you when you came to one <laughs> So that's great. We're, we're I suppose we're we're, we're ready um, as clubs. were and we need to be ready. Um, but what about actually the the golf? So tell me a little bit about um, Dunfani. Tell tell the listeners, Bill, what there was, what this, what Dunfani has to offer the golfer um, as a golf course. Yeah, well, Dunfani for those uh, listeners who've never played it, a uh, it, it is probably uh, it's certainly the most scenic golf course I have ever played, um, and I know that that's one of the strap lines that uh, Paul McGinley, your, uh, the writer captain, um, has used to describe Dunfanaghy over the years. The scenery is just quite spectacular. Um, it's a relatively uh, short links course, so you can play um, 18 holes, and I'm in my 60s now, you know, but you can play 18 holes and not come off feeling absolutely knackered. Uh, and that maybe is not the same as some of the really tougher challenges like uh, Bally Liffin or, or Rossa Pena, but, when the wind blows, Sean, as you know, the wind blows at, at Dunfanachy, it will tame uh, even the best uh, golfers around. So scenery, absolutely spectacular, right on the beach, uh, and uh, and certainly uh, a golfing challenge that, that will meet the best. Yeah, and, and it's, a, it's a par 68, has a par 5, and it's also got five par 3s on it. And, and you're right, these, 
it, the weather is everything there when it's a different beast when the weather blows. So in your perspective, what, what would you say is the hardest par three out of the, the five, Bill? Well, there, there are two crackers. The, 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 the seventh, uh, which is the most scenic tee box in Ireland, I think, uh, is a long, long par three and most days into the prevailing wind as a driver. But I think the most difficult par three it probably in Donegal is, is the 17th into a prevailing wind that's every bit as challenging a hole as, as Calamity um, at Port Rush, uh, about 200 yards off the back sticks, all carry, uh, out of bounds in the beach down the right, thick rough up to the green, maybe a bailout uh, that is protected by a deep pot bunker and absolutely crucially a green that slopes away from you to the out of bounds. So, uh, anybody who powers the 17th hole uh, at Dunfanachy is doing very, very well, Sean. It's a real card wrecker. As I well know, having stood on the 17th score, going well, thinking, what's the speech going to be this evening? Ball yeah. out of bounds, game over. I know yeah. all about it. It is a phenomenal uh, uh, hole. And, and I suppose the only thing i would look at there is is the index we probably could do something with the index on that but uh, tell me more about the uh, competitions that are run within dunfanny bill yeah so we weekend competitions like most clubs the main uh, gents uh, club competitions run on a sunday um on a saturday uh, we have a very strong ladies section at dunfanny uh, something that we're very proud of sean and uh, uh, the main ladies competition day uh, is a saturday uh, and it coincides with a men's open uh, competition. Um, and then during the week, uh, ladies have their competition on a Tuesday, gents open on a Wednesday. So there's plenty of opportunity for visitors to come to Dunfanachy and uh, play in open competitions. And then one Monday in the month, um, we have a seniors open, which is incredibly good value. Uh, and the only thing that limits the, the seniors uh, on a monthly is the, the daylight. Uh, it's such a popular competition to play in. Um, so plenty of opportunity for members and visitors to come and experience the course. Yeah, I have to agree with the uh, the senior on a Monday is a very busy competition. Um, the So as, as a visitor, how much would it cost me for an open competition, Bill? I think uh, the open competition is about 20 euros. It might be uh, 15, I think, to the local clubs uh, on a Wednesday, I think. Uh, certainly our neighbours in Clockanili um, have a, a reduced rate because they're you know, good neighbours down the road. Um, I think 20 euros uh, is the, the fee on a Wednesday and on a Saturday, 25. Fantastic value. Absolutely superb. Pius, tell me more about Bunkrana Golf Club. So what's, as a golfer, keen to uh, probably in this, this year's staycation, travel around and play a few courses. So so what does the Bunkrana Golf Club have to offer? Bunkrana Golf Club, well, it's like everybody. It's a community golf club that offers the golf is a local community and surrounding the area the keenest possible rates. The ethos of the club really promote the game of golf, uh, not just to the elite, the course, it's a nine hole course, play it twice. Uh, the uh, uh, Bunkrana Golf Club has been in existence actually since 1890. Uh, it was formerly known as Bunkrana Municipal Golf Club. But the committee is in the process at the minute and, and uh, going into the history. Uh, the, the golf was played there actually in the early 1800s, which would make the club the oldest nine hole links golf in Ireland. Uh, there are approximately 260 members and 165 males, uh, 40 ladies, uh, 30 student members, and about 25 juveniles. Uh, <laughs> Pius, can I just ask you a question there? You mentioned that it's a nine-hole course and, and having played it last year, I know it's it's right beside the sea as well and the scenery is fantastic. There, there, do, you, like, do you have challenges with the fact that it's on a busy day, a nine-hole course? How, how do you deal with that? Well, once, once we uh, let a certain, we have a time, so as we let a certain few out and then we have a gap 
in the uh, times on the timesheet where they uh, once they come round, okay, they're on the post comes round, they're able to get out and away, and uh, then you're able to bring new ones in again. Then, so you stall, you stall the times on it. So, it, so it, it's fair to say it doesn't restrict you then on on bringing maximum numbers in a day to to, to the course. No, no, it wouldn't restrict us at all. No. And what would be the is is the front nine harder than the back nine, or what's is, is there? I, I remember a par five being a lot longer on the second nine. I remember that. We have actually the longest par five in the wild Atlantic way. The fourteenth is six hundred yards. So that's right up along the water. Right up That'd be a drive and a nine iron for Bill then, would it? <laughs> drive and a nine iron for Bill, I would say, yeah, the way, the way you tell me, please. Aye. Uh -huh. <laughs> on, on that good day, on that good day. Um, and and so it's opens, you do opens as well, and, and societies, you welcome them, be fair to say. Um, what what would you charge for a, for, a mem for a visitor to come along for a game of golf in a day? Come to an open competition would uh, you normally around ten euro, ten euro for uh, open for an open competition. Uh, our competitions are mainly uh, Saturday and Sunday. We run we run uh, some competition we run during the week, but now with the now with the COVID and us just getting back to open, we'll have to run some competitions during the week when we are allowed to do so at the minute. I don't think we're going to be allowed to run competitions, uh, and it'll probably be only two balls that'll be allowed out on the course. Yeah, that looks to be the direction from yeah. government at the moment. Now, the, I suppose if we get to uh, in May, towards mid-May, we, we may have a chance. But I think at this stage, golfers will just be so glad to get on the fairways, whether it's a two ball and, and uh, competence, competitions will come. Bill, I want to move on to Dunfanaghy. Um, they've made national press recently um, in recognition of a group of very talented young golfers. Tell me more about this. Well, I think the first thing to say, Sean, as the captain, I take all the credit for how well these guys have done. And that, for those of you who don't know me, that is tongue so firmly in cheek. We have an incredible group of uh, young guys. In the past, actually, the dominant junior golfers, it has to be said, were, uh, were young women. Uh, Paula Grant, who's hit the world stage uh, uh, recently, um, and uh, two of the Chambers girls, for example. So our, our young girls in the past have done incredibly well, but the, the ones who've hit the headlines of late are four young fellas whose talent is just unbelievable. Um, young fella Luke Kelly, he's, got a, he's now 17. He's the oh. Ireland under 17 champion last year and he's now got a scholarship uh, to go to Michigan uh, on a golf scholarship to the US and um, Darcy Hogg I think Darcy's off plus one now he's the Irish under 16s champion and honest to god Sean if he nine stones soaking wet after a big Christmas dinner you know that's about the height of it and uh, you know when he hits a drive his ball is still rising when it passes mine uh, so incredible talent, and then young uh, James T. Sweeney, as opposed to James Sweeney, uh, our older member, uh, James T. He's never off the practice ground. So uh, you know, there's a lesson for me and you, Sean. If you want to get better, hit the practice ground. Uh, these boys have it well worn, I'll tell you. But great, great credit to to our golf club for sure. Yeah, it's it's very exciting, and I'm lucky that I've actually seen these young guys in action, and. Um... Young, young James T. Sweeney, he does put in the work. He, he's there every single day. And it's always the short game. It's the chipping, the putting. He just works and works and works. And and you know what? Whatever comes out of that and what they get, they will absolutely deserve. And it's great great to get, uh, I suppose, a bit of press from, from a club that um, juveniles are so important to the future. Um, and, and I applaud everybody involved there. Uh, Pius, what about Bunkrana? Have you up-and-coming stars there? Yeah, we've got we've got one little lad, a young juvenile called Tiernan Bradley. He's only I think he's only ten, and he's been making the bag all over. He's been to America. I 
needs to be down the country plane. He has won more competitions. And if he continues his development, we could have another young superstar in our hands. We actually have we actually have a lad down with us, Oliver Doherty, who is actually a gold medalist, a special Olympic gold medalist as well. At the present moment of time in the club, uh, Oliver plays off three. That's fantastic. That, I, I, I have to say now, I must read more on that young guy because that, uh, we may even have a chat with him one day on the show. Um, so the future's uh, looking bright, which is great. And it, and it is the future... The club is all about members and numbers and uh, and youth and and uh, so I applaud what's happening at both both clubs. So I want to move forward just a little bit now, and as as um as, as Bill said about the Masters is on, and we're all getting excited about getting back to play. Pius, what are you looking forward to most about getting back on the fairways? Get back on the fairways to me. I'm looking forward to meeting all the people again. All the great fairway with two great four balls on a Sunday morning. Uh, my own four ball and uh, friends of friends of mine who uh, goes out behind us and the banter and the crack uh, is fantastic. And I'm lo really looking forward. I'm looking forward to seeing all the people at the club and uh, the work the work being done down to our club at the moment. Like I said, it's, uh, we're doing drainage and all down there. And the secondary of the club, Francie McGrory and uh, the treasurer, um, Gary McLaughlin, I have to compliment them two fellas for the work they have done during the while that's been open. Well, Gary hasn't been about so much, but I can't thank them two fellas enough, you know, doing door club. It's fantastic. So th so there'll be no excuses when you, you hit the first drive, 25 yards, Pius? <laughs> no excuses. The only thing is, up the first number you come back again, there's two new bunkers. We added two new because we're watching where you were able to put your ball. <laughs> I, 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 never go. I don't believe in bunkers. Don't believe in them. <laughs> uh, Bill, I'm going to put the same kind of question to yourself that you're, as, as a captain, sometimes it's seen that you don't have time to play golf. Um, would that be the case for yourself? Are you, are, you a, are you a competitive golfer? How often do you play a week? Yeah, well, I, I think the first comment is a, a really interesting one because i think what a lot of members don't appreciate and i'm sure pious would be in the same position there is such a lot of stuff that still has to be done uh you know in the background and you will know too sean the amount of effort that committees put in that is just not seen so you know just like pious i mean i applaud anybody uh, enthusiasm to step up and do this work you know because it's voluntary work you know we don't have to do it and we do it for the love of the game and um, uh, the other thing, I mean, Pius just took the words right out of my mouth. What I'm looking forward to is the crack. Uh, you know, I play not with the same guys every week, but, you know, the banter starts when you walk onto the first tee. And for me, that's what amateur golf is all about. And whether you're six over or 26 over at the end of the round, to me, that I play competitive golf, Sean, you know. Uh, I like to win my five euros just like anyone else at the end of the game. But... It, you know, at the end of the day, it is the banter uh, and it's going in for a cold pint afterwards. That's what amateur golf to me is all about. And I'm really looking forward to it now. You're a bit of a player. You're playing off, or well, you were playing off six the last time I looked. Um, what's the best score you've had around Dunfanny? Uh, well, I've been around uh, uh, level par a couple of times. I've never broken par. So this year, Sean, you just you keep an eye out, boy. Uh, I'll, have, I'll have you cut before you can do that, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking lessons, Sean. I'm taking lessons, and I have my. my I was going to say my coach. There's a fella called Peter Martin in, in, in Belfast. Michael may well know him. He's a fantastic guy. So he said, "You have to give me a plug." He is an absolutely first-rate guy. He's played in our pro am a few times. Uh, so it's like going back to school, uh, Sean. You know, uh, I was put on the silly seat earlier on this morning because I keep going over the top. Now I know that won't mean anything to you, Quinn. That's not, <laughs> that's not a good shot. All right, that's not a good shot. I'm, I'm fortunate enough. I have Michael McGeady, who's coming on very shortly, who's uh, who, who's been helping my game over uh, over the years. Um, uh, there's another thing I've got here, Bill. That you, you actually joined a lucrative club, club back in 2020. Um, no, Pius, no, it wasn't the Pensioners Club, okay? It was actually the, it was the hole-in-one club. So tell yeah. me more about that. Well, well, I did... So the, the uh, toughest three 
in Dunfanaghy, the 17th we mentioned, and I, I got a hole in one at the 17th. So uh, middle to five iron, and I didn't even see it drop, Sean, such as the contour of the green. But luckily enough, there were four guys walking off the, uh, the 18th fairway, uh, and I knew it was going to be close. But when I heard their whooping and cheering, uh, I knew that I had uh, aced my five iron at the 17th. Uh, and if you keep me on long enough, uh, Pius, I'll tell you about the 15 that I had at the 17th the year before. Oh! But, but we're, not, we're, not, we're not talking about that, Sean. I actually wish I'd asked you about that one instead of the hole in one. <laughs> However, I, I believe, Pius, um, you're in that club as well. Already tells yeah. me. Uh, somebody told you this. Yeah, I heard that you had a, Did you have a hole in one last year? I had a hole in one last year in, uh, at the 18th, and I didn't see it. Mm. <laughs> well, I didn't see it. Because when I hit my shot, a pitching wedge, I turned around, top of the batter with one of my pals, and seen nothing. <laughs> Unbelievable. The people up at the clubhouse were <laughs> roaring and cheering. I was wondering what they were cheering about. Never the whole one until that. That's my very first whole one. I was delighted. Right. Haven't, and, haven't been there yet, lads. Haven't done it. It didn't cost me a bob, Sean. The bar was closed. <laughs> the bobs were closed. Yeah, that'll be my luck, you know. If, if I Eventually, if I ever do it, it'll be on a captain's day where it'll cost me an absolute fortune. <laughs> that'll just that be my sure. luck. What was that, Bill? And you're a Scotsman. Oh, I know. Every penny will be counted, trust me. So talking about just uh, people laughing and cheering and um, golf, is you, you both alluded to it, it's the crack that you have. Yeah. It's the enjoyment. Yeah, the result is good, but it's all about the crack and camaraderie. Bill, you're bound to have a wee funny story for me, have you? Well, that, before COVID, so it must have been over a year ago now, I was playing the second with a group of guys that I regularly play with. And as I said, Earlier on, the crack with these guys is might, uh, mighty. And uh, second at Dunfan, he's a par three, so knocked it onto the green, took my putter out, uh, and walked off the green. Couldn't see my bag and the trolley anywhere, Sean. And I looked around and thought, this is really, really bizarre. So walked over to the stream which surrounds the um, the green, and there were the the two wheels upside down. So and I just bought a new set of clubs about a month before that. So the whole bloody bag. Oops, we're live on video. My whole blooming bag, new clubs, the whole shit match upside down with the wheels spinning around. So we were, and obviously the bag at this stage, Sean, was completely filled with water. So my very good friend, the fellow called Kieran McTaggart, next thing I turned around, he's got the trousers off. He's now down to the boxer shorts, shoes and socks off. So he's now, and this is honest to goodness, he's now waist deep in the stream uh, at the second, retrieving my uh, brand new golf clubs, uh, soaking wet. So uh, that cost me a couple of pints pass that day. <laughs> That's good friends for you. I don't know if I'd have taken my trousers off and got your your new clubs. I'm not sure I'd gone that far for you. As I just captain, you never know. You never know. Pius, have you a wee funny to 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 tell me? I uh, have, I. But I was going to say you probably would have shot if had been money in this bag. <laughs> if it was <laughs> yeah, there's a fiver in there, I might have gone in now. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> well, one of my, my, my cases, it, it, it didn't happen out in the course exactly. As I, as I talked about the two uh, four balls we have, they're all messers. And there are two, uh, two lads in particular, one from my group and one from the other group. And they're steady messing, put the stuff in shoes and stuff like this. But anyway... One of the lads was going to America for two weeks' holidays. And uh, my comrade, he decides that he would get into his locker and got his golf bag out and emptied the bun into his golf bag. Do I remember the lad was away for two weeks? <laughs> so when he, when he got back, we were out in the course and he was complaining about the smell of the sewers and everything. But really, the smell was coming out of his bag. <laughs> he dumped everything from the bun into this golf bag. But it was all taken in good heart. It was all taken in good heart. 
but I'm sure there's reprisals to come for us. I, I, so that, so that's what I can look forward to when I pay me ten euros and come and play in an open competition in Punkrana. <laughs> yeah, that's the type of characters we have over here. That's fun, fantastic, great story, great story. Um, uh, we're going to be joined now as well by Michael McGeady, who's going to come in. Uh, Michael's a teaching and playing <laughs> professional at a Evolve uh, uh, Golf Coaching. Michael, you're very welcome. Thanks very much, guys, for having me. Hi, Michael. Hi, boys. I brought Michael in for for a couple of reasons. Um, the return to golf to to let people understand it's not a case of jump out the car and go and hit a golf ball. But I also wanted to be a referee because I'm going to test the captains in a quick fire question here. Um, so I hope you're ready. Now you're not. You're not. You haven't been expecting this. So here we go. I'm on the first tee, and I hit my first ball out of bounds, which could happen to quite quite a lot of people when they go back to golf. I reload. And I hit the, hit the ball down the fairway, but it lands in the bunker. So I'm not too happy. My next shot goes straight on to, into the hazard. I take a clean and drop, and I chip it to three feet. But I missed the putt. How many shots have I taken? Nine. I said ten. What do you have, Michael? Oh, was I included in this as well? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I go for nine. You go for nine? Yeah. I actually have eight. I actually wasn't really paying that much attention. To show. <laughs> I wasn't good at <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I think I, you were just going to try and go one higher than Bill there, Pius, were you? Uh -huh. <laughs> um, the, the answer is eight. That's it. Yeah, you, I took eight. Uh, so I think you, you may have counted one, two extra within there. So there you go. Just has just you just got to be careful. Even the captain can get things wrong. Michael, can I come to you um, as a teaching professional in Evolve uh, Golf Coaching? Um, people are going to come back to golf who you may not have had a golf ball in a number a number of months. It'd be fair to say. Um, what would what would your advice be to them to start as a, as opposed to to get the the swing starting going? Can they do things in the back garden? What's your, what's your advice? Yeah. <clears throat> well, like like uh, most people, um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people have been sitting at home and not getting the same physical exercise as they, they would have been used to getting. Um, so I suppose, um, like, obviously getting out for walks is, is great. You know, that's, that's great, getting out for walks and, and, and getting that little bit of general exercise. But when it comes to physical movement, like hitting a golf shot, um, there's a lot of things have to happen correctly and in the right sequence, as we all know, because golf's a very difficult game. So um, I suppose getting back on the golf, uh, um, some of the most important things I would say that would be uh, first and foremost would be trying to trying to sync up that hand-eye coordination again. Um, and, and like you said, Sean, out in the garden, chipping a few golf balls, really just starting off slowly. Just trying to feel the rhythm of that golf swing um, and, and trying to time time the shot so you're getting that good hand-eye coordination. And then as we move move up under the fuller golf swing, then um, like I certainly have experienced this myself after coming back the first after the the, the first lockdown was um, my range of movement and my, my my flexibility had completely just gone gone completely not that i have a fantastic range of movement enemy but um whatever i did have like it was was really compromised with not not um hitting a lot of golf shots just because we purely couldn't hit the shots and we couldn't get out on the golf course so yeah um for people starting back now playing again start it slow don't be stand you know don't be watching bryson DeChambeau here now in the masters and thinking you're going to stand up on the first tee and completely annihilate the golf shot you'll probably do more harm than good so start it slowly get the body warmed up correctly um do some some exercises to try and feel like you're you're warming up the important muscles which would be the back the shoulders the wrists the arms and from that then just try and get out there and enjoy the game i know with some of the boys that i play with now they're 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 out the car grab the bag on the first tee and some of them don't even have a golf ball. They may have to borrow a golf ball. 
So give us, as a professional golfer, uh, Michael, give us a, just a, a rundown of what do you do before you go and play? That's a great, great, uh, great observation there because uh, I have a lot of clients that come to me and they come out of the golf, out of the car, straight onto the first tee and they have a nightmare the first few holes until their body sort of at least warmed up a little bit. Now, not all, all the clients now, but a good good majority of them would do that. Um, so when it comes to playing tournament golf, um, I like to I like to get to the tee, um, or not not to the tee, sorry, to the golf course roughly about an hour before I'm playing. Um, now that hour will involve getting the golf bag ready, getting my shoes on, um, going hunting a few putts, few chips, few longer shots, um, and then just finishing off by just getting to the tee maybe five five minutes before I do play. Um, now, granted, the average club golfer mightn't have that hour to spare. Um, going to the, the golf course because they're already out in the golf course for sometimes anything from four hours to six hours so it's it's just an extra hour added on to their day but um, there's things that they can be doing before they do play like you know the little stretches I was talking about just a, just a few, like 10 minutes before their tea time just to try and get there and, and give themselves a bit of a, a general warm up before they go and play yeah, it's I, I, it's great advice, Michael. Um, I have to say, I remember a number of years ago, I sat before I went out to play. I sat in a, a you know, those um, massage chairs. I actually sat in one of them. I put a, a as a Scotsman, I put a euro in it. Broke my heart, but it was amazing that they actually went on the first tee, and my whole body was just it felt relaxed, and and I played a phenomenal round of golf. And from that day, I'm not saying I always do it. Because sometimes I'm that man that grabs the clubs and jumps onto the first tee. But I do try to get there a half an hour earlier to have a little bit of a stretch. Um, and it does it does make a difference, especially on the first tee, because uh, golf's all about what's in the head, isn't it? It's not always about what's in the swing. Yeah, the, the head is a big part of the golf. Like, and, and certainly the better your golf swing gets and the, the more repetitive it, it, it is, Like I think that's when the head really becomes more of a... You know, you start to use your head an awful lot more in, in the in the the game then. And as 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 a teaching pro, um, and somebody comes along, do you actually help them with that? Can you help them with that? With the 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 head side of the mental side of it, you mean? Yeah. Well, like I, I wouldn't be a qualified mind psychologist, but I I work with an awful lot of mind psychologists, sports psychology, and I. I'm a bit of a storyteller. I like telling stories from previous experiences and I can certainly relate to players in the situation that they're in. And then from that, from that uh, point of view, then I'll tell them what I've done and how it helped me. Um, and certainly like um, I've had good feedback from it, like, you know, um, so, but I wouldn't say that I'm, I'm a, a qualified psychologist by any means, but I can certainly relate to players. Um, like I've had every shot that you can imagine from, the perfect tee shot down the middle to the shank chip shot that like that everybody dreads to the duff shot onto the bunker. And it's overcoming those fears and overcoming them thoughts and replacing them with positive thoughts, I think's um key. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I, and I have to say now I, I've played with quite a few sports psychologists who are who are not really that well qualified, but <laughs> we do try and help you out when they're on the course and uh <laughs> It's uh, sometimes it can come, you know, you're loud because you, you know exactly what I mean by that. Um, as, as um, tell me a little bit more about Evolve um, coaching then. Where, where are you based? We're based at Lever County Driving Range. Um, uh, we, we teach out of there. Um, and also we do a little bit of on course teaching as well at Northwest um, Golf Club. Uh, but generally out of Northwest and um, like we, we've got a Facebook page there if anybody's looking they sort of contact us um book lessons and stuff like that hopefully we'll be getting back to some kind of normality now uh from the 26th of April um so looking forward to getting back to some kind of normality and and, and getting back playing a wee bit myself as well like you know I think I think the play inside of it is um it's for me, it's sorely missed as well because I enjoy competing. I enjoy getting out there and uh, playing in the pro am circuit. Um, I love, I love, I just love competing. Like while I can still play relatively decent golf. 
Yeah, it's it's and that's I think that's uh, to be fair to say that is the part we're all looking forward to is being able just to get the clubs out, get on the first tee, hit the ball and have a bit of crack again. And and the competitive part will come again. I think that's but I think we're 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 all just so looking forward to getting the first stage and uh, and that little little bit of freedom because I don't know about you guys, but I don't think I can paint any more walls. I don't really want to cut any more grass. I want to be out jumping in the car half past seven, eight o'clock on a Saturday morning and a Sunday if I get away with it um, and hitting the, 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 the beautiful fairways that we have in, in Donegal. Um, Bill, I hope and, and Pius, did you, did you pick up any tips there? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 When you get to our lim limbering up is very important. I completely agree, Mike. Tell Peter to settle up. You can, you can get me straightened up too, Michael. I'm cack handed. I, that, that could take a few shows now, in fairness, Pius. That might take a wee bit longer. <laughs> and this is only a pilot, so we're. we're, we're... I, I get a few people coming on holding the golf club, uh, cack handed, left hand uh, below right leg. So it's uh, it's quite it's quite common. Um, like a, a hurling background, maybe is it? Sorry, is it a hurling background? No, 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 no. no? Normally you get a lot of hurlers coming on holding it right the, the wrong way, like yeah, never, left or low right. Never played hurling in my life though. Played it myself when I was younger, like and that's how I used to hold it. And then yeah. I switched around. My dad got me to switch my grip around very, very sharpish. So then it uh it helped me it helped me uh get better at golf anyway. Well I think I'm past the point of rescue now, pensioner. <laughs> <laughs> I actually reckon Pius that if you change your hands Single figures on the way. A lot of hope. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably more hope if we're having another podcast, I'd say, than you being a single handicapper. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, I just uh, I'm going to bring it to a close now, and I, I want to thank you. Um, that uh, this is this is something that we we look forward to to moving within Highland Radio. Uh, Michael has uh, has agreed that he'll come on on a, on a regular basis with me as well. Um, it's great to have the first guests. So for that, Bill Bill McCallion of Dunfanny Golf Club, thank you. Pius McFadden of Oncrana Golf Club, I thank you. And uh, from me, Sean Quinn, thank you for all who will eventually come in and listen. Keep safe and more, more importantly, keep the ball in play. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks.